Hi, in this video we are going to add a simple sphere, turn it into a player, and write some script so that we can roll it around in our scene. This scene is made up of a plane which I have renamed ground and to which I have attached a simple material and uh, the default camera, default light, and I've also added a few palm trees um, to the scene. So we are going to begin by adding a game object, which is a 3D object, and it's going to be a sphere. So you can see in this case, the sphere has been added up here and we can just click on game to see what we see. So that sphere is gonna be up in the air, which is fine because when we start the game, its gravity is gonna pull it down onto our plane. So the first thing we'll do next is click twice slowly to rename it and we'll call it player and press enter and then we are going to add to this player a rigid body. Rigid bodies are crucial for uh, having uh, physics on an object so if you type begin to type rigid, rigid body will come up as an option and you can click rigid body and now you can see that our player has a rigid body um, and you can see that it doesn't yet have any material. The next thing we're going to add to it is another component which will be the script. So if we click on add component and um, we can see the option to uh, for a uh, new script. So if we click on new script um, and here we get the chance to name the new script and we're going to call it player controller because it controls the player and we are going to use C sharp for our script and so we're going to create an add. Now this has created a script inside our player but it has put the script into our project assets and we uh, want to keep our project panel organized so what we can do is we can create a new folder and call that scripts. And then we can add the player controller script to that folder, which keeps things more organized for us. So if we go back to player, we can double click here, I think. Yes, and that opens our script. So this is just the default script that gets created for you. Um, the name that you gave to the script is here. That's when it call, how it calls the script and it's already using Unity Engine and the system collections. And you've got this void start, anything you put here happens when on start, void update, anything, uh, the things that are updated every frame of the game. Um, and we're actually gonna add in a fixed update in a minute, which is um, associated with physics. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our variables. So we do that just up at the top here, and we are going to call this, um, first we'll make a private uh, variable and we will call that rigid body. Rigid body. Um, and this rigid body uh, we are going to call RB. That's just what we decided to call it. We could call it anything we wanted. Um, and then we're gonna put a semicolon to end that. Now, so this rigid body calls up the rigid body that we've attached to our rigid body, uh, to our sphere. Um, and then the next thing we wanna create is a float, which will be speed. And we're gonna make this one public. And when we make it public, uh, then that means we can edit it in our inspect inspector panel, okay? So a public float speed. And again, we need a semicolon at the end of the line. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we need to, upon the start of the game, we need to uh, get the rigid body component. So we are going to say rb equals uh, get component, get component, and then we need to say rigid body, close that, and then give it parentheses, and then a semicolon. Okay, so that's the syntax for that. 
Then the next thing we want to do is we want to go down underneath void update. Now you can see here when I click on this curly bracket, this curly bracket highlights. If I click on this curly bracket, this curly bracket highlights. So it tells you which brackets are associated with which brackets. So when we add our fixed update, we need to separate it from the void update. And we are going to call it fixed update. So we say void fixed update. And then we give it two parentheses and we open a curly bracket. Um, and now it's automatically attached itself to this curly bracket, which we know actually belongs to this one and is holding in all this information. So we need to add another curly bracket to close it. And now the brackets are all lined up properly. Okay, so then we can go in here and we are going to create another float and this time it's going to be for moving horizontally. So we're going to call it move horizontal. Maybe we can spell it correctly, horizontal. And um, that is going to be input dot get axis. Oops, not get key, get axis. And the axis we are going to get is the horizontal axis. So we're just going to tell that. Close the quotation, close the parentheses, add a semicolon. And then we also need to create the same thing except for the vertical axis. So we are going to copy that, paste it, and then we're going to change this to vertical. And we are going to change this to vertical. All right, so move horizontal, move vertical, good. And then another um, thing that we need to create is vector three movement. So uh, vector three movement is movement that uses uh, coordinates for the X, Y, and Z values. And so we are going to write vector three and we are going to name it movement and we are going to set it equal to a new vector 3 and we are going to set that value so we start with x so vector 3 is x and then y and then z so x is going to be move horizontal and then for y, we don't actually want to do anything, so we're going to put 0.0f. And then for z, we want to move vertical. And then we need to close the parentheses and add a semicolon. So now we've created this movement variable, which uses the move horizontal that we created and the move vertical that we created. And then we can... Um, use an add force. So we can say RB, which calls up our rigid body. And then we can say dot add force. Um, and that force we would like to set equal to movement, which we've already set up here with the X and Y axes, um, or X and Z axes. And then uh, we are going to multiply the movement times this public float that we've created called speed, which is something we can edit in the inspector. So RB, add force, movement times speed, and then we just need a semicolon to end that. So this code should work, but let's go ahead and save it and test it. So I'll save, and then we can go back to our game, and we can go ahead and try to play it. So if we click play, there falls our ball because it's got gravity. And there's no movement when I press my arrow keys and I know exactly why. So if we just stop the play, you always have to stop the play in order to make edits. And then we go to the player. We can see that this public uh, float that we created called speed has a speed of zero. So let's go ahead and make that speed 10, and then let's go back into play mode. 
And now we can move around. Oops, goodbye ball. Oh, and it's back. There we go. So we can roll around the scene at will.